Okay, the first problem that we tackle, these problems are on feedback amplifiers. The first problem is the following. We have a source Vs. I have chosen four <coughs> problems to illustrate the four different kinds of feedback architecture. The source resistance is 100K and to bring variety into experience, we have a FET, FET goes to plus 15 volts and <coughs> the resistance is RD1, okay, it is not specified and then the output of this is directly coupled to a BJT, all right. It is an FET BJT combination and the BJT is also not NPN, it is PNP, it is PNP and the source is the supply is the same 15 volt, there is a resistance <coughs> RE2. Do you understand why it is plus 15 because it is connected to the emitter? And this is the emitter resistance, not the collector resistance, okay. It is very easy to make a mistake and therefore you should be careful. This is Q2, we call this as Q1. <coughs> the, the two, the source and the collector are connected together. And there is a resistance to ground here which is RL. What you have to find out is the output is taken from here. V0. This is the circuit. It is a <coughs> somewhat unconventional circuit. What you have to find out is <coughs> the input impedance here, call this RIF prime. You have to find out um, you have to find out A beta. RIF and ROF, ROF prime is this, okay. In addition, you have to find the resistor values, that is you have to find RE2, RD1 and RL such that I sub D for I sub D that means this current, the DC drain current of the transistor Q1. It is not the same as the current through RD1, you must not make that mistake because there is a base current here, okay. For I sub D equal to 1 milliampere and I sub C which is this current in this direction. I sub C is equal to 9 milliampere. <coughs> All right. And VD1, that means this voltage, this voltage to ground, VD1, DC voltage, I won't show this. I could as well show this, okay. VD1 to ground is equal to 13.5 volt. 13.5 volt. The transistors have the following parameters. For Q1, for Q1, what you need is IDSS. This is given as 4 milliampere and VP. This also you need. It is given as minus 2 volts. All right. And for Q2, for Q2, the given data is VBE that is 0.7 volt. If it was not given, we would have assumed it, but what we need most is the beta. Beta is 100. Okay, the problem specification clear? Now, <clears throat> obviously, what you have to do is in order to find out these parameters, these are for AC analysis you require the values of GM for the two transistors. And for this transistor, you also require the value of R pi, <coughs> R pi 2, all right. This is why the DC equations have to be solved first to find the DC operating condition, the Q point, then find the GMs and R pi's and go ahead with the AC analysis. 
the the saving grace is that this voltage is given, VD1, 13.5. If you go, uh, you see, VD1, let me write this equation. I have no more space here, so I must change. You must keep on looking at this circuit. VD1, which is 13.5 volt, is the same as VB2, which is equal to 15 VB2. No, we don't want to do that. We want to find out. Yes, we want to find out. Uh, That's right. I wanted to find out I E2 first, which is the same as R E2. That is correct. You see, uh, I E2, hold it. What is V E2? This voltage. This is 13.5 plus plus 0.7. This is the point that I wanted to make. Don't make a mistake. It's not minus because it's a PNP transistor. So 13.5 plus 0.7. Now we are in business. This is 14.2 volt. And therefore, IE2, which is equal to 15 minus 14.2, the supply divided by RE2. And this can be taken approximately as 9 milliampere. If you are very fussy, then you divide 9 milliampere divided by alpha, not beta, alpha, which is beta divided by beta plus 1. And But since beta is 100, we can ignore that. Therefore, this is equal to 9 milliampere. And from which RE2 comes out as approximately 88 ohms. I have made some rounding <coughs> just to make a quick calculation, just not to spend more time on the calculator. So, uh, there may be small difference in the in the second in the second place of decimals. Next, I sub D is given as one milliampere, which means I sub D is given as one milliampere, and I B two. I B two. You you look at this. This is I sub D. And I B2 would be 9 milliampere divided by beta. beta. And therefore, I B2 is 0 0.09 milliampere. And my equation would be to find RD1 that 15 minus 13.5 divided by the total current through RD1, which is ID <coughs> plus I B2. And therefore, RD1 <coughs> can be found out. Let me not write the equation. I have explained what it is. Rd1 is 1.65k. This is what I find. What I did was 15 minus 13.5 divided by 9 milliampere and 0 0.09. 1.09 milliampere. So many k which is equal to Rd. Pardon me? IB is in the oh how wonderful that's right therefore I have made a mistake okay so it should be ID I beg your pardon I uh, this current would be ID minus IB2 okay so it would be 1 minus 0 0.09 Excuse me, sir. Yes. Is there any specific reason for not neglecting the base current? Is there any specific reason for not <laughs> neglecting the base current? Well, we don't know because the base current may be comparable to the drain current of the previous amplifier. You see, I can neglect the base current if I compare it with I sub C, right? But the base current is being compared <coughs> with the drain current here, okay? 
it may not be negligible. For example, it is 1 minus 0 0.09, which is 10 percent. No, not 10 percent. How much is it? Approximately 1 percent. Yeah. 0.09 percent. 9 percent obviously cannot be ignored. We will not ignore this. Okay. Anyway, so you understand where one can make a mistake. In the sign of VBE, in the in the direction of the base current. All right. If we cross these hurdles, the last thing to do is to find out. Is to find out. This is not a simple problem. Although it's a uh, look looks very simple. You have to find out RL. And obviously, for RL, you require you require VGS. You re because the equation for I sub D is I D S S 1 minus V G S by V P whole squared and V G S can be written in terms of I D. So, it would be an implicit, no it will not be. Let us see. <coughs> Our I sub D is I D S S 1 minus V G S by V P whole squared. You are used to getting implicit equations in I D. A quadratic equation. This will not be the case here because our IDSS is given as 4 milliampere, 1 VP is equal to minus 2, so 1 plus VGS by 2 whole squared, and this is given as 1 milliampere, which makes VGS equal to minus 1 volt. Isn't that right? Now, Vgs is Vg <coughs> minus Vs, which is minus 1 volt. And if you look at the circuit, what is Vg? What is the vol DC voltage here? <coughs> there is no source. There is no DC source. Therefore, it is 0. Is that clear? So, Vg is equal to 0, <coughs> which means that Vs equal to 1 volt. Now, what is Vs? V s is this current plus this current I c plus I d into R d. Okay. So, this is uh, 1 milliampere plus 9 milliampere multiplied by multiplied by this is the current flowing through R l. Therefore, R l is equal to 100 ohms. Correct. So, you found out all the <coughs> all the parameters. Agreed? Now, after you have found out the three resistances, the currents are given 1 milliampere, 9 milliampere. Okay? After you have found out this, we can now go to the AC equivalent circuit and we will not draw the AC equivalent circuit, we will draw the A circuit and the beta circuit right by looking at the given circuit. Okay? For the A circuit, for example, this is where you will have to uh, pay attention. Now, first thing is you have to identify the kind of architecture <coughs> because the, the A circuit shall have to be drawn in the proper model, proper model, whether it is voltage to current, voltage to voltage, current to voltage or current to current. Now, what is this connection? Obviously, the input connection is series, the output connection is no, <laughs> it is shunt because the output voltage is taken here, the voltage is being directly fed and therefore, this is a shunt connection. Please explain. The output, if the output voltage was being taken here, then it would have been a series connection here. Not, it is not a question of R pi, where it is connected. The fed, fed back voltage V f, is it proportional to the current through the load or the voltage across the load? It is obviously is exactly equal to V 0 and therefore, there can be no question. It is a shunt connection. It is also obvious that beta in this case, we do not have to do anything. What is beta? Beta is 1 because V 0 prime will be equal to V f prime. There is only a shunt resistance across it. So, one thing we identify immediately is beta equal to 1 and the connection is series shunt. 
Now in series shunt, what should be the model of the amplifier? That determines the drawing of the A circuit. What should be the model of the amplifier? Voltage to? No. Voltage to voltage. Do not make such mistakes. This is a voltage to voltage. And therefore, capital A shall be found as a voltage ratio and therefore, I do not have to convert the source into a Norton one. Okay? So, uh, my circuit is the following. Let me draw it on a separate sheet. Please, please check with your original circuit. I have I have always used these primes to find the A circuit. Okay? There is a 100 K resistance. Then we have this. Now, what will come here? Q1. At the source terminal of Q1, there was this RL, which is part of the feedback network. Since the output is a shunt connection, we short this to ground. Okay? The A circuit. Then of course, we have the 1.65 K which we found out this goes to ground and then this voltage goes to Q2, the PNP. Now what will be here? Since this connection is series, we have to open that. Therefore, all I will get here is 100 ohm and the output voltage is taken here. This is V0 prime. Q2 is connected to we found out an 88 ohm resistance which goes to ground and beta we have already found out to be equal to 1. Therefore, now I want you to calculate the gain A. Why RL was grounded? Why RL was grounded? Because the output is a shunt connection. Shunt means short shunt has to be shorted and therefore RL was shorted for this, RL was open for this. Input connection is series, so it was open. It says series shunt. Okay? Now I want you to calculate the gain by inspection. If if I if I come if I go from here to here, okay, as far as this point is concerned, there is no drop. So this is also VS prime. Agreed? Because the input is open. It is a J FET. Therefore, the input resistance is infinity. Therefore, from here to here voltage, it would be minus GM of this transistor GM1 multiplied by 1.65K parallel the impedance coming from here to ground, you have to go via this, not via this. Is the point clear? No. I have to go from here to ground. I do not know the resistance between the base and the collector. I have to go via base and emitter and therefore, I have to follow this route. That is what we do for NPN. Why not for PNP? Okay. What would this be? This would be obviously R pi 3. R by 2 plus beta plus 1 if you are fussy, okay, beta <coughs> plus 1 times 88 ohms. This is the gain of the first stage. Now the gain of the second stage, gain of the second stage you see you have a resistance here as well as here. Approximately it would be 100 by 88, but let us calculate exactly what it is. It would be minus, okay, how do I take care of this, minus 1, let me multiply by this, for the second stage Q2, it would be <coughs> minus GM2 times V pi 2, okay, GM2 times V pi 2, which would be R pi 2 divided by Okay, divided by R pi 2 plus beta plus 188 ohms. Okay. This is the current. This current flows through 100 ohms. 
to make V0 prime, therefore I have to multiply by 100. Is that clear? I have written this by inspection, I did not draw an equivalent circuit. If it is, if it proves to be difficult to see, to observe, then you draw the equivalent circuit. You draw the equivalent so that you do not make a mistake. But with experience you should be able to do this by inspection. Now in this, in this all that is, you see I do not have, this quantity is beta 2 which is known. But I, I require an R pi 2 because R pi 2 occurs here as well as here. And therefore, I will calculate R pi 2, that is not a problem, beta divided by G m 2 which is I sub C, how much? 9 milliamperes, okay, 9 milliampere divided by 25 volts. So, it is 2500 by 9, so many ohms. 25 millivolt, yes. Millivolt and milliampere shall cancel and that is how it becomes 2500 by 9 ohms. Substitute this and make the numerical calculation. My calculation, oh no, I still have uh, something else to do. I have not found out GM1, okay. I have to go back to my equation I sub D equal to I sub D S S 1 minus V G S by V P whole squared <coughs> and I, <coughs> I find G M S minus 2 I D S S by V P. You do not have to remember this formula. All that you remember is this one that there is a square law. The differentiation is obvious multiplied by 1 minus V G S by V P and if you substitute this, if you substitute the values, my value comes as 2 milli mo. And therefore, capital A after substituting this, I am omitting some number crunching, capital A my value comes as 3.08, 3.08 and beta is 1. Therefore, everything else falls into place. Agreed? AF, the feedback gain, it, it is 3.08 divided by 1 plus A beta, so 4.08, it is less than 1, it is 0 0.75. RIF prime. Now, if I go back to this circuit, if I, I did not, I do not require any calculation to say what RIF prime would be. It is, oh no, what is RI? What does this source see at Q1? Infinity. This, the gate is opened and therefore nothing can change. Make any feedback that you like, nothing changes, okay. So, RIF is, RIF prime is infinity, <coughs> that is no problem. My RO, that is without feedback, now look at the, look at the circuit, look at the A circuit, look at the A circuit. What is RO? RO is 100 ohms and therefore this shall change. Now, ROF prime would be 100 ohm divided by how much? 4.08, 1 plus A beta we have already found out and therefore this becomes 24.5 ohm and that completes the example. Okay, you have to proceed carefully. Now, uh, <coughs> in the next few examples I will not, I will not go into the details of the numerical calculations. I will show where the trick is and how to break it. Any question on this? The next example is also a very interesting example, a simple circuit, but you look at the, look at the complications that it, uh, that it creates. We have a Vs in series with an Rs which is given as 10K, then this goes to a differential amplifier. This is a DA, not an op-amp, differential amplifier in which the negative, the inverting terminal is connected to a resistance R sub E to ground and the output goes to a BGT 
output goes to a BJT, the emitter of which is connected here. That's why this resistance is RE. Please follow carefully. I'm not showing the biasing circuits. The collector is virtually grounded. <coughs> And this is the current that we are interested in. This is my output, I0. Okay. We have to find out, okay, what we have to find out is, uh, will be shown later. But it is given that this transistor is biased at I sub C equal to 1 milliampere. And for this transistor, beta is 100, small r0. Okay, for a change, this is given to be 100k. We will see how to take care of this. And um, <coughs> the differential amplifier has the following specifications. Its RID is given as 100k. The differential amplifier has a differential input resistance that is between these two terminals as 100k, RICM is not given, so we safely assume it to be unit infinity. The differential gain is given as 100, AC is not given, so we assume that to be 0. Okay. So we assume CMR to be infinity and the output resistance capital R0 is given as 1k. Don't confuse this with the output resistance. Since I have already used small r0 here, I had no other, no other option. I use a capital R0 is 1k. Is that clear? The model is model is floating in front of your eyes. There are two terminals. In between them, there is a resistance RID. The voltage is V1, let's say. Then the output voltage is 100 times V1 in series with a 1k resistor. That is the model. Nothing else is given, so we don't take care of anything else. Okay, so I must change my terminology now. What we have to find out is R. We'll call this R out. I would not use the symbol capital R zero, output resistance. Then we have to find the input resistance that is looking from here R in. Obviously, this will not be R I D anymore because there is feedback. Okay. These are the things to be found out. Oh, I also have to find out I0 by Vs. This is where you taking the output from? Output is this. The current I0 is my output. This is actually the circuit of a voltage to current converter. Voltage to current converter. Can you identify what the uh, feedback connection is? Series and? Series, series. Wonderful. This is a series, series, which means that it is a voltage to current converter. And therefore, I do not have to change this. My output shall be a current. The first question that it asks is the following. Without uh, going into any numerical values, it says, show that if a beta is large, show that if a beta is large, then I0 by Vs is approximately equal to 1 <coughs> over Re. This is the first part of the question, part A. Show that if A beta is large, then I0 by Vs is approximately 1 over Re. <coughs> now, we know this solution is extremely easy. I0 by Vs would be A divided by 1 plus A beta. If A beta is large compared to 1, then obviously this is equal to approximately equal to 1 by beta. Now, what is beta? Beta is simply Re. Why Re? Not 1 by Re. Because the voltage fed back Vf prime is equal to I0 prime multiplied by Re. And therefore, Vf prime divided by I0 prime is equal to Re. Is it obvious or I should draw the diagram? It is obvious and therefore this is equal to 1 over R. This is the first part of the question without looking at anything else. The second part of the question says, 
says that if I0 by Vs is specified as 1 milliampere per volt, if I0 by Vs is specified as 1 milliampere per volt, find Re. Obviously, Re would be equal to 1K. All right. This, this solution is also very easy. Now comes the actual problem. Re equal to 1K. Now it says make a feedback analysis and find the actual transconductance realized. Because this is under the condition that A beta is large. So you now analyze the circuit to find out what is the actual I0 by Vs that is realized and also find out R in and R out. Also find out R in and R out. This is the total problem. Now let us look at the look at the problem. This is also a very simple problem provided you view it as simple, <laughs> provided you look at it carefully. Now if you look at the circuit, I can draw the A circuit quite easily. The A circuit would be V S prime. Now comes the question of the model. V S prime, my source resistance is 10 K. Did I say it is 10 K or 100 K? 10 K. 10 K. All right. Then comes the two terminals of the differential amplifier between which there is a resistance of 100 K, that is R I D is given as 100 K. Then we have a a 1k. Now what do I do to this feedback circuit? This is a series series. So I shall have to open the output <coughs> which means that 1k shall come here. Agree? Series series. And this voltage is V1. Which 1k? Which 1k? <coughs> it is R sub E. What assumption? Okay, we have used an RE equal to 1K now, okay, on the basis of the approximation. Then the question is, with RE equal to 1K, what is the actual I0 by Vs realized? Okay, now to, to uh, get the A circuit, obviously what you have to do is open here, so I get RE. And as far as this transistor is concerned, what shall it see? It will also see RE. Why? Because it is a series series. Okay, fine. So, we go to the model. The differential gain is given as 100. So, 100 V1. Too many hundreds and tens. Do not confuse. 100 V1. Then it has an output resistance. The differential amplifier has an output resistance of 1K. So, 1K goes here. Then comes the model Shall we draw the model or shall we do it by inspection? <coughs> we want the model. Okay. Then comes an R pi and this voltage is V pi. This is GM V pi. Okay. This resistance is 1K. This is that RE. And in addition, you have the resistance small r0. This is grounded, the collector is grounded. And wh where is the output now? It is the current flowing through. Is that correct? No. From the ground, so it is this current I0 prime. <coughs> Very good. Very good identification. And once you have done that, now you can write down the gain by inspection. It is a long circuit, but it does not matter. You see, first you have to find out V1 in terms of Vs prime. So the gain, I can write this by inspection. <coughs> the gain would be 100K divided by 10K, 100K, and 1K. So 111K. 111K. This is for the first stage. 
for the second stage you have to find out I0 prime by V1. So, first thing is you write 100 because there is a 100 V1. All right. Then you have to find out GM. Well, we will we'll see how to find that out. Do you require GM or you do not require GM? Because I0 prime is the current that is needed. Suppose, suppose we find out VE, this voltage. Suppose we find out VE, is not it the same current as flowing through 1K? No, it is not. So, we need GM. Pardon me? We need GM. We shall need GM, that is correct. But you see that VE, if you look at this circuit, if you look at this circuit, VE is equal to 100 V1. Well, what is the, um, this resistance appears as effectively 1K, just a minute, VE is 1K parallel R0 and the current that flows through is beta plus 1, whatever current flows here. Agreed? So, I can write down by inspection V as 100 V1, then 1 plus beta times 1K parallel 100K. This is the drop across 1K parallel 100K divided by 1 plus beta 1K parallel 100K plus R pi plus 1K, right. This is VE, the numerator, the numerator is VE is this voltage. How is this voltage created? 1K parallel 100K. That is right, R0 is 100K, given. Okay. So, I know VE, therefore, I0 prime by Vs prime would be equal to if this is I0 prime how does this current differ from I0 prime this current is also I0 prime but we have the base current here okay so beta that is why that beta plus 1 comes and since 1 can be ignored compared to beta this is approximately the same as VE by 1K, which is 86 millimoles, my calculation. All right? And what was beta? What was beta? Haven't we already found out what beta is? Ari. Beta is R. So, beta is 1K. How V by what? <coughs> yes. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. This is I zero prime. I beg your pardon. So I made a mistake. Okay, I zero prime is V by one K, and V is just a minute. V is given by this, and V one was found out in terms of V S prime, and therefore we have to combine all these three equations. And my final equation becomes I zero by V S prime. This becomes equal to eighty six millivolt. The previous equation was not correct. This is a, this is the equation for the current. Thank you for pointing this out. We are neglecting that. You see, that contributes to beta plus 1 and we are ignoring 1 with respect to beta. Does this require an explanation? Has the rest of the class understood? No? You see, my current is V pi by R pi plus G M V pi. We are ignoring the shunting effect of R 0. Okay? And this is beta plus 1 divided by R pi into V pi and we are ignoring 1 with respect to beta and therefore it simply becomes G M V pi. 
Is that clear? This we have done again and again, but still. <coughs> okay, so so finally, what we have is capital A is equal to eighty six millimole, beta is equal to one, and therefore I zero by V S, which is A F, is given by eighty six divided by beta equal to one. 1k, right, so it is 1k not 1, you must not forget the dimension because A beta must be dimensionless, milli more multiplied by k obviously it is dimensionless. So this would be 86 by 87 which is 0.988, what is the unit, milli more, this is 86 milli more divided by 1 plus 86. <coughs> So it becomes 0.988 millimo, and obviously R i. If you look at the circuit again, what is R i? Differential amplifier, 100 k, 10 k, and 1 k. So it is 111 k, and R i f therefore would be 111 k multiplied by how much? Increase or decrease? increase it is a series series and therefore it will be multiplied by 87 I have already found this factor out and this comes as 9.66 meg but this is not the impedance faced by the source what is the impedance faced by the source R in minus 10 k which makes it 9.65 meg this assurance R I B one zero one K. So because R S was ten K. Okay. <coughs> I'm glad you raised the question. Nobody raised the question earlier. This is the confusion that I want you to avoid. I have warned you before that your A circuit is now this between V S prime and I zero prime. So it is included. It is included. You see, if this was a current source and you have to combine this, here of course it is obvious that 10k has to be subtracted, it may not have been obvious. If this, if this was a current source and 10k was absorbed in this circuit, you had to absorb it because the fundamental, one of the fundamental steps is the A circuit must absorb RS and RN and therefore it is not 101k, it is 111k. Okay. <coughs> And the rest of the circuit, rest of the analysis you can do yourself. R0, R out is not trivial. R out calculation is not trivial. R out calculation, you have to apply a voltage source and find the current. And the circuit, let me draw the circuit. You have to connect a voltage source and find the current. The equivalent circuit is, there is a GMV pi. Then there is a 100k, what is this 100k due to? R0, R0 small r0. Then you have a 1k, what is this 1k? Re. And then you have r pi and 1k going to ground. Vs has to be made equal to 0 and V pi, do not confuse the polarity, polarity is plus to the right or plus to the left left plus to the left and minus. Excuse me sir, yes. how is R coming parallel with uh, GM and RG? Oh, you look at the circuit, you look at the circuit, this is sir. coming in parallel to R0 because this is grounded. Sir, okay. sir, if our output is the collector current, so, so the input V0 should also be given to the collector. Input V0, that's what we have done. So we you have given it uh, to the emitter, the positive is to the emitter, it should be to the collector. You see between the collector and ground, just to <coughs> my output impedance is between the collector and emitter. You see, this is what I wanted, collector and emitter. Now that means between emitter and Collector is grounded, 
perimeter and ground. That is what I have found out. Is the point clear? Okay. Now, the next problem, or oh, you, you calculate this out. The next problem I will simply indicate and then ask you to work it out. I will take the most complicated one. I had four problems, but let me take the most complicated one. Just draw this circuit with me. <coughs> Vs. Rs given as 10 k, you have to find out R in. Uh, <coughs> this goes to a transistor Q1 whose emitter is grounded and which is biased by a constant current source. 200 microampere, very practical circuit. <coughs> it forms part of a chip. There is a second transistor Q2 which goes to a resistance Re equal to 140 ohms. And between this point and Re, there is a feedback resistance Rf which is equal to 10 K. The transistor Q2 is biased by a 10 volt source through an RL which is 500 ohms. The output is taken here V0. <coughs> the problem is <coughs> all right, you require uh, some data beta is equal to 100 for both the transistors. What else do you need? And VBE, <coughs> you can assume the VBE to be 0 0.7 for both the transistors, 0 0.7 volt. What you have to find out is IE1 DC, IE2 again DC value find out I E 1, I E 2 and the node and the node voltages for all the nodes. That means, you have to find out this voltage, this voltage, this voltage and this voltage. How much is this voltage? 0. 0.7 volt. <laughs> this is grounded from base to emitter is 0. 0.7. And that is the starting point of the solution. This is 0.7 and therefore, you can find this current and therefore, you can sum up this current and this current <coughs> and so on. But let me state the problem first. Find V0 by Vs <coughs> and R in. Okay. The major effort for this problem is in finding the two currents IE1 and IE2. Let me let me tell you how to do this. Um, <coughs> this current, you ignore the base currents. No, you cannot ignore the base currents, no. Because this current, this base current would be comparable to 200 microampere. You cannot ignore. So, what you do is, uh, this current IE2 is obviously <coughs> IC1 I C 1 plus I C 1 by beta. Okay. You do not don't ignore it now because this will have to be compared with 200 by this is a constant current biasing. Okay. There is a, te there is a temptation to ignore this. Then that current minus the current that goes through here is dropped across here. So, you know this voltage. Okay. This voltage can also be written as this voltage, the drop in this plus 0.7. Okay. So, ultimately what you will get is, if this current is I2, I2, please check my solution. You get the following two equations, I2 <coughs> equal to 0 0.07 milliampere plus 
plus 2 micro ampere minus I E 2 divided by 100 into 101. I did not ignore uh, that beta plus 1. I did not ignore here. Yes. This is one of the equations and the other equation is I E 2 multiplied by 140 equal to I 2 multiplied by 10.14 K. This is 200 microampere divided by 100. <laughs> Pardon me? No, this comes after uh, some manipulation. You have to write the KVLs, 2 KVLs and then this is what comes from which you can find out I E 2 and therefore you can find out all other currents. Track. This is my solution. It may be correct. It may not be correct. Okay. I may have intentionally made a mistake. Do not trust me. These are my equations. I did not go further. Okay. But tell me what is the architecture? Are you sure? <laughs> okay. Agreed. Shant series. <coughs> now, uh, what is beta? What is the beta network? Not parallel. Yes, that is right. RE parallel RF and beta would be found out as the current rising through RF divided by the voltage across RE. Is that clear? Okay. Therefore, beta would be simply minus 1 by RF. With a little practice, you did not draw the beta circuit at all. And the rest of the solution is left. Say your solutions are for I2. You said uh, it's 0.07 microamperes plus 2 microamperes. Yeah. So you assume that uh, 200 microamperes straight away going through the. Partly uh, going to the base of transistor 2 and partly going to the collector. And you can show that they are approximately equal. That's my solution. Okay. काल से प्रकृति मनुष्य का प्रेरणा स्रोत रही है यह रंग बिरंगी दुनिया सदा से ही उसका मन मोहती रही है प्रकृति की विविधता से अभिभूत होकर कभी उसकी नकल तो कभी उससे स्पर्धा करता रहा है शायद अनायास ही पत्थर पर उसके मिट्टी से सने हुए हाथ की छाप कपड़े पर छपाई की तरफ बढ़ाया हुआ पहला कदम रहा हो उस समय से आज तक हम बहुत दूर आ चुके हैं रंगने और छापने की कला आज विज्ञान का रूप ले चुकी है पर आज मानव का साहस शायद दुस्साहस में बदल चुका है उसका लालच आज प्राकृतिक संतुलन को बिगाड़ रहा है नतीजा असीमित प्रदूषण मशीनी क्रांति का असर संपूर्ण वस्त्र उद्योग पर पड़ा रंगाई व छपाई उद्योग पर भी इसका लाभ भी सभी को हुआ पर आज कुछ प्रकार के रंगों व रसायनों द्वारा पर्यावरण प्रदूषण पूरे विश्व का ध्यान आकर्षित कर रहा है आज समय आ गया है कि हम थोड़ा रुकें, सोचें और पीछे मुड़ के देखें आज की समस्याओं के हल शायद प्रकृति में छुपे हों उसी रंग बिरंगी दुनिया में जिसने मनुष्य को सबसे पहले आकर्षित किया था रंगाई और छपाई के लिए क्या प्राकृतिक रंग एक समाधान है प्राकृतिक रंग पर्यावरण की दृष्टि से सुरक्षित समझे जा सकते हैं जैसे जैसे इस संबंध में जानकारी बढ़ रही है विश्व में प्राकृतिक रंगों से रंगी वस्तुओं की मांग बढ़ रही है भारत के लिए ये अधिक निर्यात और हथकरघा कर्मियों के लिए बेहतर आमदनी का द्योतक है ये लघु फिल्म प्राकृतिक रंग उनके स्रोत रासायनिक संरचना विभागीकरण परंपरागत रंगाई के तरीके उनकी कमियां तथा इन रंगों के प्रसार के लिए आधुनिक तकनीक की भूमिका आदि विषयों पर प्रकाश डालती है 
रंगाई और छपाई की कला भारत और विदेशों में अठारह से बहुत पहले से विकसित थी जिस वर्ष कृत्रिम रंगों का आगमन हुआ था पेड़ पौधे प्राकृतिक रंगों का मुख्य स्रोत है इंडिगो यानी नील से हम सभी परिचित हैं। इसके अतिरिक्त हैं मैडर अनाटो अनार कमाला या कपिला हरडा हल्दी इत्यादि कुछ रंग जैसे टाइरियन पर्पल लाख आदि मछली कीट आदि से भी प्राप्त होते हैं पर इस फिल्म में हम केवल पेड़ पौधों द्वारा प्राप्त रंगों पर ही चर्चा करेंगे प्राकृतिक रंगों का विभागीकरण कैसे किया जा सकता है दो तरीके हैं एक रासायनिक वर्गीकरण वैज्ञानिक दृष्टि से उचित दूसरे रंगाई प्रक्रियागत वर्गीकरण व्यवहारिक दृष्टि से उचित रासायनिक विभागीकरण के अनुसार इंडिगो इंडिगो भारत की देन है बहुत पक्का नीला रंग मिलता है इनसे ये इंडिगो नामक पौधे से प्राप्त होते हैं एंथ्राक्विनोन आधारित मैडर इस श्रेणी का एक महत्वपूर्ण सदस्य है ये मैडर पौधे की जड़ से निकाला जाता है मॉड्रेंट के साथ ये गहरा लाल व पक्का रंग देता है इसका मुख्य हिस्सा है एलिजरीन जिसकी संरचना एंथ्राक्विनोन पर आधारित है लाख भी इसी श्रेणी का सदस्य है नेप्थोक्विनोन आधारित मेहंदी एक महत्वपूर्ण सदस्य है ये मेहंदी के पत्तों से निकाला जाता है भारत इसका मुख्य केंद्र है रेशम और ऊन पर यह संतरी रंग देता है फ्लैवोन आधारित इस श्रेणी के रंग फूलों में पाए जाते हैं यूरोप में मशहूर रंग वेल्ड इस श्रेणी में आता है First step is the preparation of sand for mold making. After removing the unwanted metal pieces, the sand is carefully sifted. Once the molding sand is prepared, it has to be tested for permeability, hardness and strength. So, a standard specimen is first made. In this case, it is the green sand specimen since it has got water in it. Standard weight is dropped from a fixed height three times. After the standard specimen is made, it is first tested to determine the permeability of sand. The permeability is determined by noting the time of passage of fixed volume of air through the specimen under standard conditions. The sand specimen is placed between two fixtures. This is a magnetic bit which indicates the strength of the sand at the point of the yielding of the specimen.